of the channel. I'm going to do uh, one final walk around video on Gilligan today. I did one about three years ago and I've changed a lot of things on it since then. So with my upcoming new project, Building the Truggy, I guess I just wanted to give a one final look at Gilligan and all of its components and systems that I've uh, put on it since I started, uh, well, since I did the last walk around video. So um, I'm going to take a closer look at it this time, get in a little more detail and show you what's up with what I think is the best setup for a Bronco 2, I guess. So uh, let's, let's take a closer look at it. Okay, so this is my 86 Bronco 2 that we named Gilligan. Uh, Gilligan, goofy name for a truck, I know. Um, but there is kind of a cool story behind the name. Um, I actually found the truck on an island in uh, Lake Erie um, called Putten Bay. The owner of the truck was a resident that lived on the island and he had the truck for many, many years and the motor blew up in it and it sat in his yard for about 12 years and a bunch of feral island cats took up residence in it and basically ruined everything from the inside out. I ended up buying the truck for 150 bucks, went over to the island, which was an hour and a half drive there from my house, loaded up on the trailer, paid $150 for it and drove the hour and a half drive home. So we have a three hour tour, rescued it from an island, Gilligan. Okay, so like I said, 86 Bronco 2. Pretty much the only things left, um, 86 Bronco 2 on the truck is the sheet metal now. The truck, the body was very solid when I got it, so it didn't take any kind of rust repair or nothing like that. Um, the truck has been painted. This is Summit, just their cheap single stage paint, the hot rod black, and this is their Viper Red. Um, my good friend Dennis paint, painted this thing in like a day. So uh, obviously to fit the tires, we had to do a lot of chopping on the fenders to make room for that. The truck has a fiberglass cowl hood on it. Got some uh, quick latch uh, releases on it, no stock hood release on it. Um, the front, as far as the lighting goes, we have uh, these halogen uh, converted capsule headlights. We have some uh, LEDs, some ambers on here. This bumper is kind of a homemade deal. It's been on pretty much every truck I've ever owned. Has a Smittybilt X2O. That's one of the waterproof winches. Um, and I do run a Warren, it's called a Spidura. It's a reflective synthetic winch rope. Um, I think it works very well, I like it. It's very cool at night too. Um, coming around this way, the truck has a set of custom rock sliders that I built, welded right to the frame. This was not in the last video. Um, does not have the stock glass side windows anymore. Remove those and I have snap-in vinyl windows. Um, these are very nice. I can take them completely out. I can roll them up. Um, makes it like driving a Jeep Wrangler almost in the summertime. It is, it is literally the best modification I've done to the truck is being able to open the whole thing up but yet you still have a roof over your head. I also had nets made for it. This was just so when we take our dog with us, um, have a little bit of protection and like in the coolers and stuff, so nothing's going to be flying out of the truck. And uh, I just think it looks really cool. So all three windows on the back of the truck, the back window also, if you'll see, I have snaps all the way around the perimeter. The back glass I have actually on wing nuts. I can take the back glass out and there's another net that will snap completely around that one too. So the whole truck can be completely open, pretty much just like a Jeep is. All right, in the back of the truck, I have a James Duff rear bumper. I believe they call it their pre-runner style bumper. And then I bought parts from EMS Off-Road and made my own swing out tire carrier, added it to the Duff bumper. Had a fire extinguisher on a quick release mount back here. And then we also have for, uh, for hot lunches, 
we got a spot that we can uh, bring up a little Coleman grill and, and do some cooking back here too. One of my little ideas here. So, um, truck does have LED tail lights in it or LED bulbs in it. I have seven inch backup lights here just on a manual switch. Obviously our recovery point. And that's about it as far as body modifications. Um, obviously I've trimmed a lot off the body here to clear the 37s and I sealed up the inner wheel wells with some uh, seam sealer and actually some heater hose is what fills that gap when you cut off that pinch weld. So that's pretty much the exterior of Gilligan. Truck also has just some plain bright white rock lights, the whole underside of it. I think there's four per side out of those. Those are uh, real nice in the winter time. And when you're loading it on the trailer, they be able to light up everything underneath it here too. So we do have those. All right, as far as the drivetrain in the truck, uh, what we have, the basics of it is a stock bore uh, five liter block that's been stroked to 342 cubic inches. Um, more commonly called a 347 if it was 30 over, but since it's a standard bore, it is a 342. Um, Eagle rotating assembly, Eagle connecting rods. It has Keith Black hyper eutectic pistons in it. Um, Ford Motorsport F303 roller cam and some SVO Ford Motorsport aluminum GT40 heads that have been ported. Uh, they flow a lot more than uh, what they did out of the box. Um, the truck uses mostly Ford Explorer components as far as from the timing chain out. Get the shorter accessory drive, the 130 amp alternator. Um, I've converted to a Saginaw uh, power steering pump from Wild Horses to work with my uh, Hydro Assist, my PSC Ram. The intake is all Ford Explorer, upper, lower, and the throttle body is a stock 65 millimeter Ford Explorer. And as far as the electronics go, I do not run it anymore on any kind of stock Ford computer. It runs on a micro squirt plug and play system from EFI source. So the whole computer system is basically a speed density. There is no mass air meter um, on the inlet side. Speed density set up, it's all programmable. I actually, I'll show you on the inside, a seven inch touch screen, a Raspberry Pi is where I can monitor everything in real time and do all my tuning for it. So it's a, it's a very cool setup, I think. I did also add a, a TerraFlex. It is a thumb throttle that's hooked to the throttle body so I can control the idle with the uh, thumb throttle for some real slow crawling. It does work really good. I'm very happy with it. I recently upgraded, did a bunch of upgrades to the braking system. And I had to, well, we started with a, a brake upgrade from James Duff. This is one of their early Bronco Willwood master cylinder upgrade kits, and it has the bigger uh, 80 millimeter front calipers. I did add a vacuum canister to it, and we also added a, a VW uh, electric vacuum pump. So I was having some vacuum issues with the power brakes um, by adding this pump. I, I have a constant, always about 15, 16 inches of vacuum, and the power brakes work great. So no more issues there. Um, transmission currently on the truck is a C4 automatic with a stock converter. It's a full B&M uh, rebuild kit, their shift kit. Works really good, deep aluminum pan. Um, I do miss having overdrive, so I'm gonna be fixing that on the next build. And the C4 is bolted to a early Bronco Dana 20 transfer case, T-shift. So no crazy transfer cases in this, it's just a, just a regular Bronco, early Bronco transfer case. Custom drive shafts front and rear from a, a local shop uh, up near where I work. And that's basically the drivetrain. All right, so we have a stroked 342 aluminum head, small cam, aftermarket ECU. What's it sound like? Well, let's find out what it sounds like.
far as the interior goes, um, I did have to replace the floorboards in the truck when I got it because they were rusted out. It does have a ACC vinyl, uh, rubber, whatever you want to call it, full floor kit in it. The dashboard is the original dash. I just uh, dyed it black. We had a uh, custom bezel made for it and I did my own kind of layout as far as the stereo, the switch panel, the phone mount, and I put full speed hut custom gauges in it that use a GPS speedometer as a small antenna on the dashboard. So the speedometer is always right no matter what gears I put in the axles, no matter what size tires I go to, speedo is always right. The big four inch combo gauge monitors all the other vitals. It has warning lights um, for uh, you know when it drops below eight volts. I have a warning light if I lose oil pressure. I have a warning light. Um, does have a transmission temp gauge and hearse shifter here on its own little stand. I recently, actually just yesterday, temporarily added in a new radio that I'm going to try out for this weekend here. So that is just kind of thrown in there temporarily to see how that works. And over here, I will show you, this is the Raspberry Pi 7 inch touchscreen that I can do all my tuning from and I can monitor the truck, everything in real time. Um, it normally does its own full auto boot every time you turn on the ignition, but I have to do an, an update to it here I didn't get to. So once the key is on, she goes full screen. And there we go. I have a full digital, or not digital, but a full uh, dash layout with RPM. Throws, shows me throttle position, battery voltage, coolant temp, air temp, AFR, and ignition timing. All right there in real time that I can see uh, anytime I want to know what's going on. And I can make complete changes from there as well, too. So, so the seats in the truck came out of a 1990 Mustang GT. The red was about as close as I was going to get to the original red interior in the truck. I had a local upholstery shop, uh, Kathy's Custom Interiors down here where I live. She uh, redid the seats for me, put some extra padding in them, and added this black vinyl to make it a little bit, holds you in a little better and you slide out easier without ripping the seats. Uh, custom center console that was made by a, a buddy of mine, Phil. It's got some storage in there. And it's also about a one cubic foot subwoofer enclosure. And there is a 10 inch um, kicker subwoofer on the back side of it. Um, and there is a kicker 300 watt amp underneath the seat here that uh, runs that. And that sounds really good. I recently just had Kathy's shop redo the original back seats in the truck. Got rid of the cloth because pretty much the only one that goes back there is my dog Percy. And I got tired of all his blonde hair stuck in everything. So we had the seats all redone and some uh, red vinyl with a close of a match as we could get. But I'm super happy with how it turned out. I think they, uh, they look really good, so very happy with that. All right, in the back of the truck, carrying on with the interior stuff, I do carry a uh, tote strap down all the time. This has all my recovery gear in it, 30-foot toe straps, um, D-rings. Um, there's actually a crapper in there, too. We have a, a bumper pooper we keep in there because, you know, you never know. Um, in the little factory storage compartments here, I have all the air down tools for the tires, tire repair kits, the Colby uh, quick repair valve stems are all in there. I carry a James Duff trasheroo to hang on the back here. And you got to have your, uh, your high lift, of course. So that's in here. This is all bolted down with uh, some homemade wing nuts right through the floor. And I carry a power tank for my onboard air. And also with this line here, run to a mechanical switch on the dashboard. It controls my front uh, uh, locker. I have a zip locker from Yukon. So, oh, and then another recent addition here is a uh, X-Bright chase light here where I have brakes and turn signals just because I was worried about the, the stock tail lights do work, but that spare tire does block some of it. So just to make sure we have uh, no problems with people running into the back of this, we added the chase light here. And actually, I will, uh, I'll just throw the key on so you can see the running lights. Yeah, it's bright. 
All right, so the shoes on Gilligan. What we have here is 17 by nine method racing wheels. These are their trail series, what they call with the bead grip technology. And we have 37, 1250 BFG KM3 mud terrains. Um, these tires, as you can see, they have been completely butchered off-road. I have run these tires down to 8 PSI and because of that bead grip uh, outer retaining lip on these rims, I have never lost a bead, never pushed a tire off, and I have, I have pushed this thing into rock so hard that you could actually see down between the uh, tire and the rim, and I've never lost a bead. I do like where they put the valve stem, it's kind of tucked in and protected a little bit. So uh, these, have been, these have been awesome on the truck. As far as the brakes, in the back is just stock 11-inch um, drums, like an early Bronco. In the front, uh, we do have the upgraded James Duff kit that I bought that's basically, I think it's the Lincoln Ford Thunderbird 80 millimeter single piston calipers on 11-inch rotors, and it's pretty basic. And right here, you can see the Yukon uh, lockouts. Those things are awesome. They've never failed me. I've actually had a set of worn hubs break on this truck three times in the past. And these things, since I've replaced them, have been absolutely perfect. So highly recommend Yukon parts. Okay, now to the, the good parts here. Um, steering on the truck. Um, like I said earlier, I put a Wild Horses Saginaw conversion on it. So I have the Saginaw pump going to a Wild Horses uh, PSC ram kit um, with their little mount that goes to their uh, track, by, track bar riser bracket. All the tubing is 250 wall DOM from Rough Stuff with their offset tie rods. Um, and it uses basically a stock stock Bronco to Pittman arm to get the angle there. The track bar is also, that is a James Duff track bar that's been converted to Heim on the end. And the steering works really good on it. Um, I did add the reed knuckles to it for the high steer. So we do have one high steer arm on this side and then uh, that controls everything else here. So the steering works really good. And um, without the PSC Ram and the 37s, I tried using the original Explorer power steering pump and with the front axle locked, uh, no dice on the steering. So um, having the PSC and then now I have the air locker, that's, that's a nice combo, so. The front suspension on the truck. Um, everything here started off, it's a James Duff uh, long arm straight axle swap kit that I got from them. So it has their long radius arms going to the axle. The James Duff lower and upper uh, coil mounts. They have their buckets that bolt to the frame in place of the stock buckets. I have recently, the truck originally came with three and a half inch early Bronco progressive rate coil springs. The truck was too high, I didn't like it. So I just recently upgraded to Deaver two and a half inch early Bronco coil springs instead. To lower the, it actually lowered the truck about an inch and a half and it rides better it's easier to get in and out of and it, it flexes just as good as it did before so it's mostly all james duff components in the front other than i did swap out their coils for some shorter ones um, when doing a straight axle swap just because of where the upper and lower buckets are the three and a half inch coils actually give you about five and a half inches of lift because of where the coil is mounted on top of the axle tube and the uh, coil buckets. So right now with the two and a half inch coil and the way this is all set up, the truck is probably sitting around four, four and a half length inches of total lift. All right, the front axle. This was a big thing that's changed since the last walk around video that I did. Um, the truck originally was built. I had used a early Bronco narrow Dana 44 low pinion. Um, with as much flex as this truck has, I was getting into binding in my steering, binding in my drive shaft. I could not get proper caster angles. Um, it was just a mess. So to fix all that, obviously I went to the high steer, the different knuckles. 
And this axle is out of a 79 Bronco. It is a full width Dana 44 high pinion that I cut down, I cut this end off, drove the cast iron end off and cut six inches off this tube, repressed it on, re-welded it, so it still matches the same narrow width as the early Bronco uh, 44 that I had, but now I have a high pinion 44, uh, which is stronger. I fixed all my steering angle issues. I fixed all my front drive shaft bind issues by doing that. And the truck does have 456 gears. There is a, a uh, not a ARB. There is a Yukon zip air locker in the front. And as you can see, it has RCV uh, axle shafts in there that I should never have to worry about. So um, I think as far as a Dana 44 goes, this is probably about as bomb proof as you can get right here. And coming to the back of the truck, uh, what we have back here is a early Bronco. This is a one year only, I'm told. Uh, 76, nine inch narrow width for the early Bronco. But it is the uh, big bearing, I think they call it the 6500 GDW version of it. So it came with the big 11 inch brakes, the big bearings. Um, inside of it, we have a four, set of 456 gears. We have a full spool and 31 spline superior chromoly axles. Um, I am running front and rear James Duff um, uh, MS8020 shocks on it. They, are, uh, they were quite a nice upgrade over the, the normal shocks that came with the kit. And I'm just, I adapted a, a stock, the original Bronco 2 rear sway bar, because this thing, um, going down the road, it does have lots of body roll. So I did try to alleviate that with a the stock sway bar, it does make a difference when I when I take it off. I can definitely tell that it's not there, but um, it definitely needs a front anti-roll bar for sure, and I'll address that on the next build. Um, like I said, the uh, drive shaft I had made locally. It's actually a 250 wall uh, DOM drive shaft because I completely uh, pretzeled the uh, last one that I had. So, and then I just have some normal bump stops in the rear for this. Um, I did forget in the front here, um, you can probably see on the James Duff arms, I do have a set of Stinger Daystar bump stops um, that use the little crushable cushions inside the cans. So that's what I have in the front and then also you can see the limit straps and the other MS-2020. Uh, MS anyway, the James Duff front shocks up there, I forget what they're called anyway. And can't quite see, and I'm not crawling underneath it, but there is a full two and a half inch exhaust system with a Flowmaster muffler, which you heard earlier. So that's pretty much everything that's going on underneath the truck. Um, pretty basic, nothing else really to speak of. So that's it for under here. So I want to give a big shout out to uh, my friends Eric and Larry for giving me access today at Genoa Classic Cars for getting a better look at Hill again and throwing it up on the lift to see the underside of it. Um, very cool uh, facility here. Gilligan's definitely in a good company here, so uh, take a look around and uh, see what they got going on here. These guys do some uh, amazing work to some really cool cars. And uh, I never mind spending a minute over here with these guys. All right, so that's, uh, that's about as close as look at Gilligan as we can get anyway. I just wanted to show one final time how the truck ended up. I'm pretty much done modifying this truck for sure now. So this is it. This is what, what I feel is just an awesome combination for a Bronco 2. Um, it's not a cheap way to do it, but I think it's a good way to do it. And uh, after this, um, you probably won't see much more of this truck on the channel. Because I'm going to be starting a new build with a Ford Ranger Truggy and a lot of the parts off Gilligan here are going to be uh, donated to that, that project. So this is a end of the road for old Gilligan here. It served me well, but we're, we're getting beyond its capabilities and I need something a little bit uh, bigger, longer, safer. Um, I really do need something with a full cage and I don't want to put a cage inside here because uh, I already fit like a sardine in it as it is, so we're doing exo cages on the next project. So anyway, that's it for this truck. Um, 
down in the comments below if you have any questions on anything or anything I may have missed or whatever. Drop them down below. I'll answer them best I can. And uh, that's it. This is Gilligan.